Hello, my name's Traji Kohara, and today I'm making a thing. I, I, I don't really know what it is, so I'll tell you what it is once I've finished it. And I know sometimes more is less I need to get this off my chest Come out and find me if you dare Because I Because I care Because I care I tried to film why I made this after I made it, but it took me two days to figure out how to say it. Like, I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't make sense of it. I, I, and I spent all day thinking about it, but I couldn't make sense of it. But this is my self-belief switch, right? And I've spent two days thinking about why I made it. Two days to get the story straight in my head, right? I now know why I made this. I know it's not real. Right, there's no inner workings to this. It's not like there's an electronic thing or something. It's a bit of plywood painted to look like wallpaper. I should have used just actual wallpaper, to be fair. Yeah, that would have made my life a lot easier. With a switch. That, that's what it is. I know that's what it is. It's made up. It's not. It's a made up thing. But so is self-belief. Having self-belief is a made up thing. You don't go to a shop and buy it. It doesn't come in a pill. You don't like read a book and then you've like it just appears out of nowhere. Like it's a made up thing that you need to make up in here. Right? And I have been working on this for I don't know how long. Like that's that people went to the gym, I sat with this. Like I and not like reading books and trying to be intelligent, just trying to figure out why I think the way I think. I am now doing things that I didn't think I, I was capable of three years ago. And I've been constantly kind of trying to work on the way I think about things, the way I talk about myself, not about myself, the way I talk to myself, and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's hard, 
It's not easy. Like, it, it's a really hard thing to do. Like, I used to talk to myself horrifically, and I had to really, really work on that. Like, I spent a long time trying to catch myself when I was doing things and stuff. And that, that's it. Like, this idea of self-belief is made up. It's not real, right? It's a, it's a, it is real. It is real. Self belief is real, but it's a made up thing. Like you need to make it up. Like you can't just. It doesn't come in. It's not snake oil. It doesn't come in a pill. Like you need to really work on that idea of self belief and stuff, right? Even while I'm saying this, I still feel like I, I, there's still a bit of me that thinks should I be saying this? Like, but I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story, right? Now this whole, this whole walrus thing. So like, good things are happening with this walrus thing. Like, good things are happening. There's things that have appeared that I am now working on that scare me. Like, I've never done anything like them before. There are things that I never even thought I would ever get the opportunity to do. And they're appearing. And I've got to take them. I, I've, I've, I have got to take these opportunities on, even though I'm terrified. <laughs> like, because I could totally, I could totally mess the whole thing up. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to just figure it out because I, 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 it, it, Although I'm scared, it feels right. It just feels right. This whole walrus thing, this whole idea of chasing the walrus and being a professional walrus chaser and all this sort of stuff just totally feels right. It just totally feels... It just... This is the only other time that I've felt the way I feel now. See the way this walrus thing makes me feel? The only other time I've ever felt like this was when I'd done this. Now, many years ago, I don't know exactly when it was I'd done it, right? But I'd made my first album, Above the Below, made it in my bedroom at my mum's house, right? With a student loan. Took a student loan out, bought all the recording equipment and started making an album. You wouldn't, you have no idea how many people laughed at the fact that I was doing that. Like, thought I was an idiot for doing that when I was 20, maybe. My second album. Was it my second album? I don't know. But I came up with this idea to do a concept album and just something felt right about it. I'd called it from El Dorado to Hell's Kitchen with no more bad intentions. And I'd read a poem. I know, I used to read poems. I still do, to be fair. I just don't really, I just don't really tell everyone, everyone that. But it was based on a poem by Edgar Allan Poe called El Dorado. And the story was the journey of someone travelling from El Dorado to Hell's Kitchen with the only gun in existence. Like, guns had never been... There was no other gun invented. Right, This was the first gun ever made and there was six bullets in it and it was the story of this person going from point A to point B that's what it was it was the journey all the songs were telling the story of this journey through that through this place right and it was like a western but it was like the first gun and no one else had this thing and there was only six bullets in it and that's what the that's what the story was about and I started writing the songs in fact the song that I used for the Making the self belief switch. That was one of the songs that was going to appear on this on this album. And I started designing a comic, and the comic had a map. And when you listen to the album, you'd be able to read the comic, and the comic would tell the story of the album and the songs and stuff. And it was like this big concept thing, and I was working on it, and I was drawing things, and I'd wrote, written songs. In fact, see the song "End of the World" that appeared on my third album, "Honor Among Thieves." That was supposed to be on this album, right? And I was I, I was really into this, right? I, I wasn't thinking about like, oh, this is going to be as big as, and this is going to make me, it was nothing, I was, wasn't thinking about fame or anything like that, I was thinking about being able to make this thing that was, I, I was really into, I just really into this idea, in fact, it was after my second album, because that video that I made for Half the Lies I Tell Ain't True, that was kind of one of the catalysts for that, that was like an animation thing that I made, um, using a whiteboard with some of my friends, eh, Rory, Kirsty and Duncan, I think it was the three years, and Gordon, maybe, I don't know, anyway. And I spent a while on it, and I'd written songs, and I came up with the ideas, and I kind of started working on art, and I'd done all this sort of stuff, and I was telling people about it, right? I was telling people about it. And I was in the pub one night, and I said to this guy, not just this guy, I said to maybe three or four different guys, this is what I was doing. And one guy piped up and said, I... Because your first two albums sold so well that the idea of doing a concept album, that's a real winner, and totally berated me. And I stopped. I just stopped there and then. I been the whole thing. <laughs> right? The guy had never written a song, couldn't play a radio, couldn't draw a bath, couldn't, he hadn't, he, he, that wasn't part of his thing. But what he believed was more important than what I believed. And I, get, I stopped doing it. And years later, 
I said to my wife, and my wife was like, that sounds like a great idea, why did you stop doing that? And I let that person's opinion shoot down the whole thing, and that's on me. That's not on him. Right? I should never have let someone else's thought process like that affect me. Never. Right? But I never had this, the tools that I have now. I had developed those tools. I was in my mid-20s. I'm 34 now. Totally different person. So I valued his opinion on what I was doing rather than my own opinion and my own belief in what I was doing. Because self-belief's made up and I hadn't made it up yet. That's what it was. Now see this walrus thing, there's a bit of me that's not been holding back, but there's a bit of me that's kind of going, is this mental, is this this, I don't know whether this is going to, but that's it, that's it done, I, because, because I believe in this, I have belief in this idea, and it's taken me from 2017, three and a half years, I've been working on this thing, three and a half years, right, since I came up with the idea, and I've been trying to build into this thing and gain the confidence to actually come out and say, in real life, I am a professional walrus chaser and this is what I'm doing. Right? That whole thing with that album, that whole thing with From El Dorado to Hell's Kitchen with no more bad intentions will never happen again. And I'll tell you why. Because that's that on now. So it's not happening again. Okay? I've switched on the self-belief switch <laughs> and I'm now doing this walrus thing. That's it. The opinions of other people don't matter. I believe in this and that's all I need. I don't need other people to believe in it, right? It'd be nice if they did. <laughs> It'd be nice if they wanted to come and watch the story unfold with me but I don't need them to believe in it because I believe in it. And that's it. So next time, Gailey Bidite a gallant night in sunshine and in shadow had journeyed long singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old, this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Don't know.